Amen. Amen. Well, welcome Amen. to the Well-Centered Woman podcast, Miss Tarika, Teresa Ikandayo. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I'm so focused on your last name. I'm going to get it right. <laughs> Teresa Ikandayo. Yes. <laughs> welcome. So glad to have you here. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so good to be here. Yes, I'm really, really delighted to have this conversation with you. We're going to dive into some things, but by way of introduction, she is the founder of Two Minutes with Teresa, TMWT Coaching and Consulting, Coach, Consultant, Strategist, um, so many things. And so we're gonna dive right in. Tell us the story of how you came to Two Minutes with Teresa. Where did that come from? Hey, um, two minutes with Teresa, you know, I, I don't exactly know where it came from, but um, it's a Holy Spirit thing, of course. And um, with my mentor, when I was being certified for coaching, one of the things she said was to um, think back to what people have come and asked you about when considering your name. And I thought about it and I was like, okay, people, what do people ask me all the time? And what people always ask me is, Teresa, do you have a couple of minutes? Can I get a couple of minutes with you? Teresa, do you have a couple of minutes? Can I see you for a couple of minutes? And it's it's all the time, that phrase. And I was like, ah. And then I just heard two minutes with Teresa. I was like, mm, that's kind of cute. You know, I like that. And so um, that is how the name came in place. And um, once I did the logo with the TMWT, um, that, you know, it really all solidified and confirmed that it was a, a God name. Um, and the, and um, with the logo itself, the TMWT, the M is the person, you know, when they come to coaching, usually people are down or they have their way down with a solution. The W is when they're lifted up. And the two mm -hmm. C, if you see my logo, is a bridge from the beginning to the end. So the Holy Spirit showed me that and even in my logo. So the whole thing was geared and um, came from Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's your edge going into <laughs> 23, the Holy Spirit. I love that. Two minutes. Everybody want two minutes. Can I have two minutes? Two minutes. Two, two, two. I love it. I love it. And I also love your mission because you say that your mission, um, you know, I did my little homework because I always do my homework, right? I help single women, particularly mothers, regain the power of their voice learn who they are in God, learn to partner with Holy Spirit and stop settling for less in relationships. Tell mm -hmm. us more and why the passion for single mothers. Uh, the passion for single mothers is because I was a single mother. And um, when I became a single mother, it was not by design, of course, but um, it was um, something, uh, uh, something that happened. But once I knew that I was pregnant. Um, I knew I couldn't do it alone. And so, you know, I came back to Christ, submitted my life to him. I had to make a decision between staying with the, the, the father of my child or pursuing a relationship with Christ. Um, and I actually had a dream where, you know, the Lord showed me the true nature of um, my um, child's dad. And he asked me, which one did I want to kiss? And I had to decide, <laughs> did I want what he showed me, which was horrible. It was a horrible looking, um, the, the spirit that was in him. He showed me the spirit within him. It was, it was horrible to look at. And he said, is this what you want to kiss? You have to make a decision. And so I had to make a decision between him or serving God. And so I decided that I was going to live my life for God because I had to do it for my child. If I didn't care about myself enough, I cared about my son enough and my life had to be centered in God for my child. So being a single mother that long, um, I have a passion for single mothers. I know what they go through, some of the hardships, um, the hardships of not selling for less, you know, taken down because of a man, you know, because there's hard times, times when you don't know where the next dollar is coming from or where the next meal is coming from. And it's so it's so easy to fall back into, you know, placing a phone call or sending a text and say, hey, I need money versus 
relying on God to Come do on. You know, what you need. So yeah, I have a passion for single mothers and um, it's a literal, it's something that the Lord literally showed me in a dream that um, there's single mothers that I need to help. And um, when she turned around, she was fully pregnant. So I believe it's twofold, it's single mothers, but it's also women that are birthed in something. And so I'm called to single women and single mothers because you know that's my forte. I've been single so long and I've been a single mother raising a child that will be 22 um, very soon. And I did it with nobody but God. Nobody but God. Amen. Nobody but God. Nobody <laughs> but God. And by way of just, just to let our listeners know, you're going to see a common theme. I think we're going to see a common theme um, with, with uh, Miss Teresa of how the Holy Spirit operates with her in her dreams and the wisdom but right now i gotta put a pencil right here because you know you said some powerful stuff when you said the lord asked you who do you want to kiss mike who you gonna kiss (laughs) my god and you had to make a decision when you saw yes and it was not choosing to follow christ and let go of that relationship that was not an easy decision and it doesn't mean it was easy no it wasn't wasn't. even after making that choice Mm -hmm. right yeah and even after making that choice you know i still had the moments where i was weak and i failed but you know you know even with that (laughs) you know like i said the holy spirit that god deals with me in, in such a way that sometimes i don't even like to tell my stories because they're so out there and one day we need your stories we don't care if they're out there we need to hear this right but you know one day he came over this is after i made my decision and you know he used to creep me in and um you know come and you know i'm I'm super strong christian you know oh he can come he's just sitting on the other couch and i'll sit on this couch across the room we're not touching everything's good i'm strong christian i'm you know I, I'm superwoman Christian and this and that. And, you know, he'll come over, he'll see the baby, he'll leave a little money, he'll go. And so that was my plan. <laughs> that was my plan. And so what used to happen is he would come over and, you know, you know you're know, pre- you a woman that, that used to be pregnant. You had all those hormones going. Um, now you've had the baby. Your hormones are still going. And then he knew this. And, you know, when you date a man, especially if you date him for some time, they know you. They know your weaknesses. And let's just be real. They know what you like. They know what you don't like. They know how to say a thing. They know how how to how to maybe touch you on the shoulder or whisper in your ear or, or whatever it is that gets you going. And he knew. He knew. He knew and your buttons, huh? Buttons. And so he would get up and maybe get some water or something like that. And every time he would get up, I noticed he would move closer to me until he was sitting on the couch with me. And what happened is I had game. He had some game. And he said something in my ear one night and I felt that voice all the way to my toes. (laughs) My toes. And the next thing I know, I was having to repent. I was like, oh God, what did I do? And, you know, that is what happened up until where uh, God said you had to choose because I was still trying to be, you know, still trying to be holy, still trying to keep it together and say, okay, I'm not going to do it this time. I'm going to be strong, this, that, and the other. Same thing would happen. So mm-hmm. after I said, you know, you have to choose, he came over this one night and he threw his keys on, on the counter like he always do and he sat down and I, I had come out the room. This is after he told me I had to choose and I looked at him and I looked, I said, what is that? There was something over his head. I cannot describe what it was. It looked like, the only thing I can tell you what it looks like physically is like a platypus. I don't know if you've ever seen something like that. A Mm -hmm. duck-billed platypus. Um, Mm -hmm. Weird looking animal that's kind of flat and has his head. And it was was over his head. Mm. And every time he moved like that, the thing moved. And the thing was looking like, what am I doing here? Or, Or can you see me? And I could see it. And so when he was moving, he was talking, he was like, hey, you know, this. And he was getting ready to do his regular routine. And I saw that thing over his head. I grabbed his keys. I grabbed his coat. 
And I gave it to him. He said, what are you doing? I said, I don't, I said, here, I said, we're going to come up with a plan on how you will give me um, the, the you know money for my child, but this is not it. You have got to go. He said, what's going on? I said, I will call you later, <laughs> but you got to get out of here. <laughs> and then my God really drove the nail into me becoming celibate and, you know, um, letting him go. It is yeah. still hard, you know, because you you lonely. But every time I thought about that night and that thing I saw with his head, I would not call him. I would mm-hmm. do count none of that. You know, oh my God. When you have a call of God on your life, or when mm-hmm. God is trying to drive a point home and you really want to serve God, but you you're weak and you need God, you know, where it says where, when he's weak, we um uh, where we are weak, he is strong. I needed his strength. But his strength came in me seeing something that horrified me enough to get that man out of my house to live the life that I'm living now. Because if I hadn't, you know, I would have always been teeter-tottering back and forth because I couldn't do it in my own strength. Mm. But that is what it took for me. Now, it may not take that for everybody, but it took me seeing that. You had to see a vision. You had to see a vision of some spiritual thing that was attached to him, really. Don't forget it. Yes. Yeah, for you to finally have the gumption yes. to actually do it. You know, mm-hmm. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, I believe, his grace is sufficient. Where you are weak, he was strong. So God came through for you in the vision. And, you know, and that's why you have the passion for single moms, because you know what it's like, what I call <laughs> slipping and dipping. So, yes. yeah. That's, <laughs> but this is a real raw conversation. Right. And, you know, As you begin to heal and order your life, once you finally cut that loose and eventually date again, how did Holy Spirit help you to avoid other dead-end situations? He wasn't the only dude, I'm sure, that came. You know, he helped me. um, One of the things I learned to do was ask Holy Spirit questions. And I had to learn that early because nobody really taught me how to interact with Holy Spirit. Or, and you know, I was, I came up religious. So everybody that taught me, taught me that God was going to get you, you know, if you, mm. speak, you know, if you thought wrong, or if you look wrong, you know, you were automatically going to hell. So I didn't know how to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, but I had a relationship with him that just developed naturally. God cultivated that relationship. He taught me how to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because nobody else did. And so I would ask questions and he would provide the answer. And, um, you know, um, it was, it was hard at first to, to know, you know, which guys to try to date or which guys not to date and to keep myself from first having my evil spoke, uh, my good evilly, even evilly spoken of, I would, um, limit guys to telephone calls first. And then I would try to weed out you know, gentlemen that way, see what I could pick up or what I could determine or ask certain questions. And they answered like I wanted. They didn't make the cut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was levels to this. <laughs> there was levels. So if they made the cut, you know, for round one and round two or three, you know, then we finally got in person and dated. So the, the ones that I did date and the ones that I was uh, engaged to, there were things that red flags and, you know, things that I saw that I knew wasn't quite right. But, you know, when you're single and you're single um, for a long time, like the scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart sick and you begin to get a little desperate and then your trust and faith that you had in God is not, you don't trust him mm-hmm. and you faith. It's like, okay, this is here now. I can see him, but I can't see the guy or the gentleman that you may have for me later. But this gentleman is here now. Yeah. He's filling up the, the void or, you know, the empty space that I have when, when, you know, I'm sitting here saying, Lord, send me my husband. So, you know, when you get somebody, it's kind of hard to let them go unless you can um, have the discipline to listen to what Holy Spirit is saying. And a lot of times I heard it, but I overrode what I saw. Come on now. And Mm. it was, it was was some things that, oh, you know, okay, I'm just going to justify that. I'm going to, we're the queens of doing that. Band-aid that up. I'm going to hide my, my eye, (laughs) you know, that I see it, but you know, I'm not going to see it. You know, 
I can pray, you know, we can pray together and, you know, he'll let that go. He'll change that, you know, after we together, when we married, he'll change that, you know, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, but in me was the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you the questions to ask the Holy Spirit. And so I just said, Holy Spirit, okay, you know, I love you and I can't do anything against your will. Show me what I need to see. Make it plain. Mm -hmm. Make it so plain I can't miss it. And then every time Holy Spirit will show something that I didn't see. And it would just be so plain. I'm like, oh, really? Really? Yeah. Uh, Holy Spirit, you didn't have to ask like that, you know? You don't have to be that bold. Because we like to pull the wool of our own eyes. We like to delude ourselves. And it's our fantasies and our desires of the heart that get us in trouble and cause us to get into delusions. And the fantasy and the delusion is what keeps us attached yes. to men for too long. And, you know, I heard a minister say we love to give the benefit of the doubt, but there's no benefit in doubt. <laughs> there's no benefit. No benefit in doubt. There's no benefit in doubt when it comes to matters of the heart. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you just got such a powerful testimony in this area of just how you have navigating that dating space mm -hmm. and listening to Holy Spirit to help you discern and get out of these dynamics. Now I want to shift a little bit um, because, you know, you've worked in corporate for over 20 years. You've been working with executives. You handle large, very large accounts, complicated projects. You've done a lot of stuff, lady. <laughs> Religious institutions, corporate businesses. You got ministerial and coaching certifications so ranging from finances to inner healing. You're an ordained minister. And like you mentioned, um, you know, you're newlywed now. We should talk. That'll be a separate podcast. I got to get into that. Your journey, your testimony. And you got your, uh, your son who's getting ready to 22 turn yeah. 22. But again, as we have discussed, you haven't always been like this. And how did you at navigating that space as a single mom? What and, and in your coaching and mentoring women over these years in your experience? What is the common mindset beliefs and behaviors when it comes to poor finances and poor relationships with single mamas? that you see that you've seen play out in your own life and in the lives of the women you coach because I think there's a correlation between the finances and the relationship what is it there is uh, it's, a, it's a few things that that is the common thing number one is there is a void there's something missing with God it's either the relationship is not uh I like to say tight it's not tight enough um they're not in total alignment with God something's missing something's off kilter um, there's something that needs to be straightened out with the relationship with God. Um, we're not perfect. We grow, you know, we die daily, but there's something that needs to be, um, fixed. I hate to say fixed, but the relationship needs to be, um, it's not an alignment. Yeah. It's... It needs to be nurtured. It's not an alignment. And there's somewhere where their view of God is skewed and they are feeling like a piece of them has a void. So somewhere where God should be is a void and the void is being filled with things. Um, spending, drinking, eating, going out with friends, partying, buying games, you know, playing games where you have to make the, the purchases in it, um, you know, paying for the movies, the on-demand movies. It, it comes all kinds of ways. Man. Overeating, you know, at home, but people will say, well, I ate at home, I didn't spend money. Well, when you ate that food, what? how do you get more? You have to buy more. So you're still overspending because you're eating up what you have out of comfort to fill a void when you can just eat in moderation. And that that one little two, that, um, bucket of ice cream you got should last you probably a month and you're eating it in a week, you know, to make yourself feel good as a, as a comfort. And so now what are you doing about another thing of ice cream? And you probably, you're probably buying, not you, but you know what I'm saying, the app that person is, is buying four where, you know, someone else would just buy one that eats in moderation. So they're still overspending. Mm -hmm. So the main thing that I see is there is a void somewhere in their life that should be filled with God, feel, should be filled with Holy Spirit, but they're filling that void with other things, relationships, mm -hmm. men, like you said, if it's a woman, if it's a man, it's a woman, you know, or whatever. 
in some type of relationship and all these things, if you're in a relationship, there's not too many relationships you're going to be in that you don't spend money. So those relationships, um, even um, being, because um, everything's not money, even being in wrong relationships with friends that Come on. are the wrong circle, the wrong friends that are detouring you from your destiny, people hang on to them because they fill a void. They make you feel good. you know, um, Or they might be the cool friends or they have... Mm -hmm popularity or they, they hang out with the right crowd and you know if you let them go you're going to be alone so in order to fill that void that should be filled by holy spirit you fill it with the wrong type of friends or the wrong type of environment the wrong places mm -hmm. so Look, you know, yeah the most common most common because somewhere in there if you if you're overspending like that there is a void that needs to be filled by holy spirit mm -hmm. Mm, that's so so good and we feel it with being busy too we like to distract ourselves because if we get quiet and by ourselves holy spirit that that stuff that anxiety that pain is going to come up that emptiness that feeling and so we got to hurry up and try to pack it up with something i can't i got to start scrolling on instagram i got to call somebody i got to do this i got to do and this it's it gets addictive mm -hmm. mm. And, you know, sometimes we just have to cry to cry. You just have to cry to cry. Got to get it out. Yell to yell. You mm. have to cry to God. And, you know, because, you know, depending on how you were taught or how you are brought up, a lot of people don't know that you can just talk to God, just like I'm talking to you. And you can pour out your your frustrations. I have done it. Yeah. I've had to because if you don't, sometimes, you know, if you hold all that stuff in, you know, people, some people go crazy. Yeah, you, know? you really will. Life is tough you know, with the Holy Spirit, with the leading of God, but without his counsel, without going to him in relationship is tougher. And so we need to take those times, cry to cry, mess up your makeup, lose the eyelash, take the wig off or whatever you got to do and get ugly, you know, get behind doors and just get ugly. So that when you go out, you can look good. And nobody knows what you did at home. It's not you're being fake. It's you're getting it out there because you're weak there. And like we said, he is strong. So when you go out, you can take the, 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 you know, the daily things that you have to take and you can walk the daily walk you have to walk because you spent time with the father. And to you, it seems like, oh, I'm so weak, I'm this. But he loves that we inquire of him, even if that inquiry at this moment is a tear-stained faith. Mm -hmm. Because those that once you wipe those tears, you're not always coming to him with a tear stained face. It's like you said, it's levels, it's levels to it. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's some strength that will come up in you. The Holy Spirit will stand up in you. And and you and when you get ready to make the ugly face, you might know, I'm not crying today. You know, I'm just gonna come to God just how I am. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him what I need and what I think of him, that I love him and he's he's this and he's that. And you begin to, instead of pouring your heart out, whining and complaining and God, do you see, you begin to admonish the Lord, you know, admire him and tell him how much you love him and everything. It changes. It changes the dynamic it shifts, but it starts. It starts somewhere. With that vulnerability and crying okay. out. And in the vulnerability, what you're saying is the vulnerability and crying out to God eventually results in that void being filled. Yeah. But you got to get to vulnerability to fill that void. Yeah. And what we do is we close our hearts off to God and that's how we're staying out of alignment and that's how we get off kilter and that void stays empty and we fill it up with everything. We're driven to distraction with everything other than the father. So good. What would you, what advice would you give to a, a single mom right now that's doing that? Well, that's, try, that's, that's, you know. I'm trying to feel this void. I'm not, I don't want to feel my feelings. I don't want to cry. I don't want to sit by myself. I don't want to feel anything. I don't want to feel it. So we don't want to feel it. We don't want to feel the pain. We don't. Nobody likes pain. Pain is not good. But one mm -hmm. thing I have learned, and it had to be a Holy Spirit thing because he gives you impressions. It's not always something you hear or something that you dream or anything, but there's there's a knowing that comes in you that you know this is the right thing to do. And there's been situations that my flesh wanted to run from it because of the pain. But my, the spirit in me, the Holy Spirit in me said, embrace it. And so mm. what was when there's pain and to this, that single mother, you have to learn to sit in the pain. 
sit in it, face it head on. It, it is not pretty. It's terrible. I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes, sometimes it's just terrible. But it's just like um, what the Holy Spirit is showing me now is a water slide. So when you come down on a water slide, like if you're up in a space mountain or somewhere like that, when you come down that water slide or any type of amusement park, when you come down, there's a big rush and the water hits you in the face. And for a moment, you're choking. You can't see, you know, but after all that is gone, it's just a moment. It's just a moment. Exactly. exactly. You know, face, you're all right. And you can see, you know, you didn't die. You're not choking anymore. The water's gone. So the pain is the same thing. If once you face it head on, the brunt of the pain will hit you. Mm. But then it's just like that water slide. It hits you and then it rolls off your back. And God is there to comfort you. And he he strengthens you in that pain. And the next thing you know, you're he takes you above it. And you know, like, you know. Yeah, man. And now you got a testimony. Yeah. Pain doesn't come to stay. Pain yeah. comes to pass through. And yeah. when you let yourself feel it and go through it, you come out stronger. Yeah. But what makes us weak is not expressing the pain. When you just let it express, let yeah. it come through. But when we're holding it and repressing it and hiding it and numbing it with trying to fill the void, it just makes us weaker. Yeah. But when we let it pass, we get stronger. Oh, this is so good. So good. I know we got to keep moving. Here's another question. What advice would you give to our listeners who have recently endured a divorce or like broke up with, you know, their father, their children or whatever? They have young children. They have God given goals, dreams. They have business ideas and they love God. But they still haven't fully healed. You know, they may be in some situationship dynamic, like what you were talking about with that ex or with other ones. Yeah. They're wanting to date. They want to get married again, but they haven't done that healing work. Haven't done these different levels. Like what, what would you tell her? Well, I'm going to tell that single mom or um, newly single mom that you have to slow down. Just slow down and take it easy. Don't rush into anything. Because if the healing is not there, you're going to make a mistake. You know, I don't care how good the situation looks. If you don't do the work of healing, you are going to make a mistake. It's the same as if you hurt your leg or something physically, and they tell you to stay off that leg for six weeks, and you hop up on it on three weeks saying, oh, I'm good, and you start walking around. There's internal damage that you might not see immediately, but you will know the effects of you getting up three weeks on that leg instead of waiting out the six that they ask you to, to wait. So if if you um, rush into a new relationship or um, you know trying to fill that void with a new man or something like that, mm -hmm. just because you're divorced or just because you broke up, you know, just trying to eat, you know, stifle out that pain that you feel, it's not going to work. And it's not even saying that that person is not the person for you or anything, but until you heal, you will never be who they need. You will never be the help me that they need. You will never be able to provide the advice that you need. You will never be able to pray for him like you need because you will always be praying and giving advice and doing what you do through filters of the last pain that you felt. Come on. So if you don't get that healed, you cannot be whole. And, and when you um, come with a person, with a man, um, to marry him, you have to be whole because you become one. It said you become 75%. Um, it didn't say you, you become 0.75 or, or half. You become one. And if you're going to become one, then that means both of you have to be a whole. Or if that person's a half and you're a half, if you want to say it like that, then you need to bring your halves together and be a, a one. Mm -hmm. But have to be at a, a level that God can make you one and he can't make you one with somebody if you are still broken and battered from the last um, relationship that you didn't take time to do the work on and you know sometimes we're just lazy with stuff and we just want to move on to the next but I guarantee you if you wait mm. to work what you thought you lost what when God brings it back around him or her even if it's that one and you have to lay off for a little while, when he brings that person, that that um, 
I'm not saying her for her, so let's get that straight. But if it's a man that happens to be listening, when he brings that mate back around, mm -hmm. it will be better than you imagine because you did the work. Because Amen. you did the work. And because you, you did the work. Yeah, these re rebound relationships, we, you know, we're out here. And again, we just, you know, we're trying to, we're dating for, out here for dates and dinners and attention. <laughs> trying to fill voids, like you said, and not wanting to feel feelings to do the work to really unpack. Because if you don't learn the lesson, you're going to keep repeating mm -hmm. that cycle. And then a lot of times we're in these cycles like this and it impacts our finances. And so you could have all of this God given ideas and destinies, dreams and goals, single mom just broke up, but that heart got to be healed first. Yeah. I heard this quote and it stuck with, with me, uh, Teresa, a broken woman will build a broken business. Oh my goodness. I'm like, well, my God today. That was a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, Lord Jesus. But uh, do you agree? Yes, I do. Because everything is going to be broken. Mm. You know, it's your hand. It's your hand. You know, even the word, when you put your hand to the gospel plow, when you put your hand to the gospel plow, if, you're, if, you're, if you are broken, your hands are broken. Oh, Jesus. Because your hands are a part of you. If you are broken, your eyes are broken. means you can't see correctly. If you are broken, your ears are broken. You can't hear correctly. If you are broken, your heart is broken. You can't love correctly. So everything you do is going to be broken. So when you put your hands to the gospel plow to preach or teach or lead somebody or mentor and you are not healed, it's broken. If you um, are, are doing a business, even if it's a kingdom business, it's going to be broken. It will never be what it's supposed to be because you're out here bleeding on people when you did not do the work um, and your, your attitude and your character has not been perfected by God. And like, we're not perfect. But there's okay. some things he wants you to get in order before he puts you out there on display. That's Come what he does. You know, even um, at a, you can go to Walmart or somewhere, um, and when they have fine china or, or, you know, dishes, they don't put dishes up there that's dirty. Well, you know, push them off. And there's a, there's a criteria that they have before they put that dish on the shelf because they want you to buy it. So when he puts you out there, he wants people to buy what you're selling. You know, not, uh, and, and it could be literal. It could be a literal product that will change your life. And he wants you to buy that product, but he wants to you to be able to hear mm. that his word, his word will not mm. return for it. Um, mm. and, and when you, um, when mm. you're speaking or when you're given what you're given, mm. and so, you know, um, mm. that, that is what we need to do. We need to make sure we're healed, mm. whole, and 100 percent submitted to the father amen amen private order before public display amen amen private order that's what i'm hearing what you're saying private order before public display it doesn't mean perfection yes it just means excellence it means a certain level and a certain certainty and a certain settlement a certain groundedness in mm -hmm. terms of your capacity in terms of your healing before you can be put out there you know, and public order before uh, uh, private order before public display. And I had a saying that I use and now I can't even remember your life can't be put on public display when your personal life is in, a, in disarray or something, <laughs> something <laughs> like that, that I would say. And we're not perfect. We're not perfect. But there's a degree of healing and order that we will have to have. And so with all of that, because we touched on business and ministry. And so, like I mentioned in our early conversation, and even as I alluded to a little earlier, going into 23, mm -hmm. going into 23, you know how in the secular world, they say, what is your competitive edge? Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, and I want you to elaborate on your kingdom edge coming into 23. I know, but I want to hear you say it. <clears throat> you know, my my kingdom edge is just how God speaks to me. Yes. The, um, the discernment that he gives me, the dreams that are very detailed, the open visions um, that I have of where to go, where not to go, how to do, how not to do, who to marry. <laughs> you know, gotta where to go. That. We got to get into that. You know, who not to marry, you know, and he's already given me things for my business products and um, the, the frameworks and the, and the layouts and the things that his people needs for 2023. 
but it comes sometimes, you know, because if you're submitted at all times, like I said, we all make mistakes, but the father knows that we are, our heart is submitted to him. And when our heart is submitted, he can mold us however he wants. I love so that. He sleep. He can put an idea in your head. And, you know, some, many times I wake up and I see the idea. I see me doing it. I'm like, what is that? And I wake up and write it down, you know, and then it becomes a product. Or I hear him say, get this done before the end of the month. And I'm like, get what done? I don't really know how to do this. But he will show me how to do it and make it happen. You know, I have been to jobs where, um, not even my business, I have been to jobs. And I remember this one particular job um, where I had no clue. I knew a little bit of what they were asking. But when they came out, they had a manual this thick. Wow. And I looked at it and I said, Holy Spirit, help me now. I had no clue how to do what they were asking. Everything they said sounded like Greek. And the Holy Spirit literally told me what to do and what not to do. When they were going on a desk and people were training and they would say, are you ready to go on a desk? I said, no. Holy Spirit said, no, not now. And what he did was took me to let me sit. They let you sit with different people to see how they did it. Mm -hmm. And what the Holy Spirit did with me was show me what not to do by sitting with the people. So they were, they were having me sit with them to see what to do. He had me sit with them to show me what not to, not do. to do. So he said, now you're ready for the desk. And when I got on the desk and started doing the, um, the IT, um, the SQL servers, when I started doing what I was supposed to do, I never had a failure. Never. In the history of the company, they had never had anybody not have a failure. And so my my uh, manager at the time, he used to call me money in the bank. <laughs> money, money in the bank. bank. And you know, we used to get little, you know, little ticks on the board when we do our um, you know, our, our, our server upgrade. And I said, why don't you ever come to me to check to see um, you know, how many I've done or if it was success? Oh, he said, Oh, I know it was, it was a, a success. I don't even bother to come over. And I said, What? He said, come Oh, no. money in the bank. <laughs> You the bob.com. He said, I give you yours. I wait an hour and a half and I put success on my board. And I was like, really? He said, yeah. He said, that's why I never come to you. He said, I know it's a, a success. And so that man was a preacher. So even then he was probably prophesying and I had no clue that he was prophesying, even though for that moment, it was that job. But, you know, like you said, that edge, when we put our life in, in Holy Spirit's hands, when we submit to him, that hour and a half is your time learning with the Holy Spirit, your time submitting to the Holy Spirit, your time praying with the Holy Spirit, your time going around saying, Holy Spirit, what should I do? Um, should I go right? Should I go left? How do I do this? I have no clue. Talking to him, that's your hour and a half. And then God puts a success on the board. So it's just like that. So you could be money in the bank. If you get your relationship tight with the Holy Spirit, Nobody has to come and check you and see if you have a success. You will have a success because mm. that hour and a half you're waiting, which, you know, um, we use, uh, you know, metaphorical, that hour and a half that you spent with Holy Spirit, that success is on the board. It's a given. So <laughs> even come with, on, I let you flow. I'm like, that's a whole word right there. Money in the bank. Money in your, the oh, bank. You, we need to unpack that. we <laughs> had more time. Money in the bank. That it's, time with the Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that's your success check. Money in that, the bank. It is. Your kingdom age right there. And you have to be able to listen even in crowded spaces. Um, so, you know, when chaos is going on, you know, even with the chaos going on, you still need to be able to hear Holy Spirit's voice above the chaos. Um, because sometimes he will say, be slow to speak. Don't speak. Don't get involved, you know, say hello, go hug her. And all these things you need to be able to hear in the midst of chaos as, as well as you can hear it in quiet. So, That's so good. So Let me you, ask you this. What that, about chaos on the inside? Yes. Chaos on the Up inside. here. In your mind. And in here. Crowded in your heart. Holy Spirit will still speak in a still small voice but you have got to hear it and that voice 
whether it seems like it or not, with all the thoughts and all the pressures and all the should I do this, I don't think I'm good enough. I don't look like that person. The comparison, the when will I ever get married? Um, my finances are jacked up. Will I ever get them in order? I don't feel like I'm good enough to lead. I want to do this business, but I don't know what to do. All those things going in your head. The still small voice is still more powerful than that voice. But your, your tuning, you have to be able to tune your ear and your heart to hear him like a radar. You have to be able to pick up the bleats, even within the chaos, because you can have, like I said earlier, the, the tear stained face. And, and, you know, sometimes we get a little rebellious. We don't want to. We say we ain't gonna. And, you know, and, and, and we quit. Mm. But there's a push inside you that says, no, you don't quit. That's get right. it up and do what you need to do. Come so, on. You know, if, so the Holy Spirit is, he, he is the edge. He, he is the edge. He's the edge. He's the edge. I love it. The edge for everything. You preaching a whole word. <laughs> you preaching a whole word. So I'm gonna transition, and this is another aspect of the kingdom edge. But you know, like I say, I do my little homework. Okay. <laughs> and I listen. <laughs> I listen to one of your two minutes with Teresa videos, okay. and in it. You were talking about how God dealt with you on spiritual maturity and yeah. people and their personalities and the things that they do. And you were talking about how like you you were in a different phase of learning with God. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you get into where you can expect certain behaviors from people because they haven't been healed. They haven't done the work. They're not delivered. And now you've matured to level so that you can deal with those behaviors and you're not tripping and you're not getting out of character. You're still able to love them where they are and see them the way God sees you. And you talked about how that was a test for you. And I feel like that's a part of our kingdom edge that we need to care about, care, uh, carry into as we up level in 23. Can you unpack that some more? Yeah. You know, um, we're all unhealed in some area, you know, no, how, how, no matter how great we are, there's something that God still needs to work on in each of us. None of us are perfect, but there's some people, bless the Lord, well. <laughs> that need a little more work than others. And, you know, there's some people that, and, and this again goes back to that void because the void, you can fill it with things, but that void, if the, it becomes, can become an open door for something to fill you. That's not the Holy Spirit. And so then you're operating. Wait this. a minute. Let me just, <laughs> hold up. You need, uh, can you repeat that for the people in the back? Because that was a word. Do you realize what you'd be saying? Go yes. ahead. I'm sorry. So if, you, if that void that should be filled with Holy Spirit is not filled, even the word says when the Spirit comes back and he sees the house is um, swept and garnished and it's not filled, he will go and get seven more and come back and he will take place. He will take the place of what the Holy Spirit should be occupying. So um, there are spirits, when you leave open doors, you, when you leave voids that are supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you create open doors in your life that, you know, not only do you fill them with things, things fill you. And so your attitude and your character can be messed up and you have no clue because the Holy Spirit is not in an area that he should be. And it takes deliverance. It takes time on your knees. It takes somebody that you will actually listen to to tell you about yourself so that you can get it right. And then if they tell you about yourself, you need to accept it and say, instead of no, that ain't me. You know, and even if you say, no, that ain't me, take it to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, is this me? And let him show you. But when people fill themselves up and they get filled up with, with these things, that's how you have people that still love God, still, you know, Holy Spirit filled, but they're they're operating in the wrong spirit. And so then you got to deal with these people. And then, of course, you got to deal with people that don't know Christ at all. And so you got this whole mixture of people that you have to love through God's eyes. And then you have, but so like I was saying in that video, what the Lord um, had, had shown me years ago, he, he I studied personality types because I want to know why people do what they do. What makes them do the things they do? Why are there certain behaviors that people do that some people don't do it? And, you know, what makes people tick? And so for two and a half years, I studied that. 
And then the Lord took me to through several tests, humiliating tests, where I had to learn to love people above what they were doing to me. And I still love them. And then after stuff that would be horrific, he would say, now go hug them and tell them they get, did a good job. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding? Are you kidding me, Lord? What? You want me to do what? Go hug her and tell her good job? Really? And me and shaking her neck and all this other stuff and everybody mm -hmm. talking to me. And now you want me to go hug her and tell her, you know, great job? Mm. My God. Her and do those things. And so then he took me to where now personality types, they don't bother me that much. And the triggers that I used to have that would, you know, send me flying off, don't send me flying off. But like I was saying in that uh, video, now I've come to realize that there are certain people that because they haven't done the work, they haven't done the healing and they don't see themselves. You have got to put on a spiritual, a, 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 I guess a spiritual brace yourself because this attitude is what you can expect. This behavior is what you can expect each time from that person. And it doesn't mean God doesn't love them. Doesn't mean they don't love you. But the spirit that's controlling them does not love you. And that spirit is going to raise its head every time you come into their delivery. And so now you've got to realize that this person is dealing with a spirit. you got to pray for them. you got to bless them because they are not your enemy. The enemy in them is causing them to be an enemy. And so that's why you have to bless your enemies. So now you have to bless this person, still see them, and they're some are purposely trying to hurt you, purposely. But you still have to stay above the situation, mm. stay above the expected behavior, and love them like God said you should love them. Wow. And I'm not saying it's easy, but you got to do it. <laughs> now that's high level kingdom edge right there. Yeah. Yes. To be able to stay above that mm -hmm. and to pass that level of a test. Because that's the kind of kingdom edge we have to be operating in. Not just going into 2023, but every aspect of our lives. And so you're talking about a high level of maturity and not getting in your feelings and discernment because I'm thinking about they're going to be lady leaders they're going to be single moms that's going to hear this yeah and so the advice you're giving them what is the succinct quickest advice to give them if they are in that moment right what you're talking about one of the, one of the quickest things and one of the most effective things I learned to do is pray immediately pray mm. immediately any offense, pray immediately. Even if you have to pray in your head while standing there, taking the humil humiliation, taking the offense or whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying be a doormat, but sometimes Holy Spirit will refrain you from retaliating, for, from opening your mouth. And, so, and some of these things you just have to take because Holy Spirit said, no, don't, don't speak back. Don't do so and so. And then there's other times where you can speak but even when you speak, you still have to be governed by Holy Spirit and you cannot get out of character. You know, you want to mm -hmm. represent God, you represent the kingdom. And so you have to stay in character. You can be firm, but you still have to stay in character. And so um, yeah. even with that, um, you've got to stay at a level. The, 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 the main thing I say is forgive quickly. It doesn't sound like it's easy, but if you say the words, put them out there, speak those things as though they were. Because even if you don't forgive them, I forgive them. I release you. I let you go. That's things we learn from our pastors and our mentors and, and people in my life. Mm -hmm. Let them go as quickly as possible. Forgive as quickly as possible. And then the number one thing, the other thing I do is I bless them. Lord, I bless them. Amen. I start praying for the house, the family, this, this, and this. And what it does is I still might feel the, the, a little sting, something. The sting. Or yeah. the sting. Uh, or as people can say, I feel some type of way, but I've done my due diligence and where it wanted to take root, it can't. So Amen. I would say, forgive quickly. Pray, pray even, quickly. Pray quickly, even though it doesn't feel like your prayer is effective because you're still feeling that thing, pray anyway. And that will get you over the hump. That will give you your kingdom edge in those situations. This yes. is so, so important. We're always talking about my next level in 20, you know, next year, but you know, if you're ri rising in leadership and rising in influence, 
you're going to run into that. That's why I wanted you to hit on that because I feel like it's so important for our kingdom edge. And I think what we're hearing tonight is we got to keep our, we can't, we have to deal with the voids and be in alignment with God and be filled up with him. We got to learn to discern his voice, the still small voice in the midst of the chaos in and out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got to deal with those relationships and matters of the heart really being healed healed up and getting our lives in order. And then we talked about passing some of these spiritual maturity tests. All of it is part of our kingdom edge, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to transition a little bit and then we're going to be wrapping this up. But I just want to know, like you started um, TM, you know, I'm going to mess it up, TM, WT Consulting, because I'm so in the zone of what we're talking about. You started your coaching and consulting business. What triggers in your emotions came up based on, you know, the things that has happened in the past that you had to deal with when you like, okay, I got to step out on it. I got to really do this. You touched on it a little bit earlier because you're like, there's no way I'm going to go live. And now you are here like, you know, you miss live doing your little two minute videos all the time. <laughs> but what other triggers came up for you when you finally said, OK, God, I'm going to surrender and I'm going to do this. Like any emotional highs and lows and triggers. Came yeah, um, you know, that's a good question, because. Um, I don't know about everybody, but that buzzword, uh, I, and I don't like words that everybody use a lot. Like, so a buzzword is the only word I can think of, but um, the buzzword imposter syndrome. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I kind of yeah. feel that because the enemy is going to come at you and say, what makes you qualified to say what you say, to do what you do, to um, produce what you produce? What makes you qualified, even though you can look back at your history and have proof after proof, certificate after certificate, uh, project after project. Experience on top of experience. On top of experience, success after success. He's still going to come to you and say, what makes you qualified Whisper to do what you do? And that's all so he can stop you from helping somebody in the kingdom because your voice is needed. Your voice is needed. What you do is needed. What you bring to the table is needed. And that, that is his goal, you know, to, to try to stop you. So the imposter syndrome, um, you know, um, even, you know, sometimes like, I, I guess with me, I look and there's plenty of coaches. There's a plethora of coaches, coaches of coaches, Good coaches, galore. Yeah. coaches of this, coaches of that, executive coaches, coaches that um, executive coaches that execute um, executive coaches. <laughs> You know, business coaches, <laughs> relationship coaches, financial coaches, coaches. coaches. If you want a coach for a coach and a wellness coach, coaches, I, holistic I, coaches, kinds of coaches, business strategy coach. And I'm like, okay, you got, I, well, here's the sea of coaches. And you talking about go for it. I'm like, really? Well, go for it and do what? In the sea of coaches. <laughs> In the sea of coaches. In the sea of coaches. You know, and I'm like, you, I was thinking to myself, what is my little, you know, two minutes going to do amongst all these veterans and these, you know, all these other people uh, that have done what they do and, um, you know, and, and still doing what they do and their success and they're, they're making millions and billions and whatever else. And, and you know, yeah. 6K, 7K and getting awards and followers is like, uh, you look at the followers the followers are so many that they, some of them, they stop even putting a number to have so many followers, <laughs> you know, and there you are with your little, you know, you haven't even broke the thousand mark. And yeah. then, I'm saying me, I haven't even broke thousand I know, mark. I know the feeling. What am I going to do again? These, I'm not competing against them, but you know what I'm saying? It's still. Yeah, the feeling, because it, it feels so overwhelming. It's like a tiny voice in the middle oh. of thousands and thousands of voices. Like, how's mine going to elevate God? Why? Yeah, a little goldfish in a huge river, not a pond, river, a little goldfish. Ocean. <laughs> and I'm like, and you really want me to go for it, Floyd? But, you know, I did. And um, he's showing me, you know, there's some moments that solidified me being a coach. And I was like, God, this is worth it. You know, to be able to teach people to hear your voice, to be able to have moments where people said, I have went to this coach and that coach. And these are some big name coaches. But it was you that I heard this through. 
or it was, I didn't get it until I talked to you. Or people that said, I never thought of it that way. I've never heard it taught that way. Or, uh, and then, um, you know, I even had people say, you are who I need. You had the experience. You know what it's like to, you don't know, just know the book knowledge. You know what it's like to experience what you're teaching. And so most of us, the, the niches that I teach, I have been through it. I have the head knowledge. I have the certifications. I have the experience. But I also have the life experience. So um, when I come and I teach, I'm not just teaching what I, I learned in a book, which that's part of it. But that that book knowledge is molded and and you know cultivated by the experiences I've had and the things <clears throat> I've been through. And I I know the feelings of how the feels gonna come from, or how to feed your child, or when or when am I ever gonna get married? When am I ever going to get my finances together? Lord, do you hear me? Are you there? I know all those feelings. So mm. I take all that and it's all rolled up with everything else that I bring to the table so that it can be a complete package. Amen. I love it. And what she's saying is for the listeners who are going to listen to this is that she just doesn't have it in her head. She embodies what she's been teaching. She embodies what she's been preaching, the practical wisdom, the practical strategies that she is teaching and mentoring and coaching in, what it means is she's lived it out in her own walk. So mm -hmm. she walks the talk. I'm talking in third person like you're not sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you're saying. That's what I'm hearing because that's a difference. And that's one of the things that I've got is dealt with me on. Like you can have head knowledge. Mm -hmm. But it's like, and God can give a revelation. So this is where, you know, I'm talking for myself. He can give me a revelation or a download. But just because I have a revelation or a download, that I'm not going to be so quick to t teach, talk, and tell it so fast. Okay. Let me sit with that thing for a minute because it's for me first sometimes. Sometimes it's not always for everybody else. And let me embody that thing and walk it out and have some healing and some transformation and renewal in my own mind and this own revelation. That the way when I do share it, I'm living it myself. It's not just me sharing, you know, talking, right? There's a big difference. So I love what you're saying. I love what you're saying. And so what advice would you give a single mom working a full-time job and she wants to start her business. You know, she's got some financial stuff going on. Like you said, she might be feeling some voids here and there, but she loves God. Mm -hmm. And she's working her full-time job, but and she, she wants to start her own business. She wants to be like Teresa. <laughs> what would you tell her? Well, first, you know, like I said, you've got to have a relationship with Holy Spirit. Um, your relationship may not be like my relationship, but you have to have your own re relationship and know how he speaks to you. Um, have a prayer life and the things that you want to do, you take to God. You know, there's things that I've done by faith, like writing um, certain things that I want to accomplish down and putting it in an altar. I mean, to put it in a, um, the Lord had me by a table that had a draw before when I didn't have faith like I have now. And I would take what I wanted to um, do and write it down on the list and put it in that drop and pray and praise God in advance. And he would do everything on the list, everything. And there's nothing I'll put in that draw that I can recall that he has not done. And so that is what I leaned on until I was able to just walk and have faith and just speak things. And so get a, um, something that, even if it's something physical to hold on to, to elevate your faith and begin begin to decree the things that you want to see. Um, you know, write those things down and, you know, put God to the test. You know, the word says, prove me now. Can't you know, you. you can prove him. You know, if you're paying your time, if, you, if you're paying your bills, you, you're taking care of your kids, you know, working hard, prove God. Let Come him on. Prove himself to you. Ask God to prove himself to you. Father, I know who you are. Let me see this. I've never seen this in my life. Lord, I want to see this in my life. Um, you know, I, I said something simple. I said, Lord, I heard plenty of people say somebody just came up and paid, you know, gave them money or paid, you know, for their meal or just something random happened. I said, I've never seen that in my life. I want to see that. It just happened. And that happens a lot. 
You know, sometimes I go to a restaurant and I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. Somebody already took care of it. I'm like, what? Really? You know, so yeah. you have to ask God for what you want to see. So even if you don't have the money, even if you don't have the time, tell God what you want to see and stand on that. Don't waver. You know, write it down. If you have to put it all over the house, if you have to put a sticky note in the car, if you have to make your, your phone screensaver, that thing, do it until it gets into your spirit so you can have the faith for it. And then ask God for the steps to carry that out. It might be education. It might be you need to start saving. He'll give you the strategy to start it. But you need to start from relationship and faith in him to do the thing that you're asking for. And then he will make it come to pass. Relationship and faith. Mm -hmm. She just gave a whole lesson on how to build your faith up until you, <laughs> till you, till your spirit is strong enough to hold on to that seed. <laughs> that is so good. So here's my last, next to the last question. Let me, <laughs> next to the last question. <laughs> if you could go back and give 18 year old Teresa some advice, what would it be? Do not go back on God. Do not go back on God. I backslid around 19 because, um, you know, like I said, I grew up very religious. We couldn't do anything. I had never seen the world. And when I got a taste of the world and I had some freedom, I didn't have discipline. I had a bunch of do's and don'ts, but nobody told me how to live life. Nobody told me how to have a relationship with God. Nobody told me I could pray to God when I made a mistake and he would forgive me. And so when I made mistakes, I felt dirty and I felt ashamed. And I felt like, you know, and then the enemy was talking like, well, if you've already done this, you might as well just go back into the world and do this and that and the other. And so I had no support system. I had nobody to help me. And so I did things that, you know, I'm not proud of, but those things that I did go through, they all work together for the good because I have experiences that I can now use with women. And so uh, I would tell her, don't go back on God. Do not backslid, backslide. I know it looks like the fun is out here in the world, but the fun is in the kingdom. And there's much for, more for you that God has if you can just be patient and hold on to his hand. So yeah, that's what I tell, my, tell myself. Don't go back. <laughs> don't give up on God. Don't give up on him. Don't backslide. Yes. My God. My, my God. Amen. And as we close out, tell the listeners about your latest product, projects, products, services, what you have going on in 23, because I'll have your notes and your links and contact information, but tell us how they can keep in contact with you. Well, um, you can go to my website, um, which is the main place to go, www.2men's with Teresa.org. That's two M I N S with Teresa.org. Um, for 2023, I have um, many financial workshops that are coming up. I'm going to do some things with credit. And I'm also going to put, I uh, have a um, program called Money Mender, which I'm going to look for 20 to 25 win women. And we're going to walk through a three month journey to um, get your budgets, not just get them in order. Um, we are going to try to get more months, I mean, more money at the end of your month instead of more month, more month than money. So we're going to walk through a journey together as a group. And you're going to take your finances and you're going to walk through that. And you're going to plan ahead of your bills. And I'm going to show you how to um, create a system to get ahead of your finances. And, and eventually what you'll have left per month will start to increase. So yeah, we're going to do that. Um, and uh, right now I have a book, a journal on Amazon, um, my financial journal. It is a, a, a spending tracker and money management tool. You can find that on Amazon. Um, and my last name is very original, Teresa Ekintayo. So if you go to Amazon and just type that, it will automatically come up. Um, the other things I have going on is... Um, of course, I'm, I'm, I have the five-day challenge, the replays that you can um, look at for that journal, and it will walk you through some um, spending habits and some things that you can learn while tracking um, your spending. 
And, you know, so I have some exciting things that, you know, I want to do next year for the ladies in person and virtual. Um, so I'm just excited about what God has done. And hopefully, um, I, I really have a um, the one I didn't mention. I have a webinar that will be coming up. And should I go ahead and give the title of it? Yeah, go, why not? Go for don't it. Roach, don't roach in my DMs. Come so on. that's exciting. Don't Say it again. Say it again. Roach in my DMs. <laughs> don't roach in my DMs. Don't roach in my DMs. Mm. It's about around February, around Valentine's Day. And ladies, we're just going to have a good time and we're going to talk that talk. <laughs> So. Amen. Amen. Well, there you have it. I want you all to connect with her, follow her on Instagram, follow her on YouTube, all of her platforms, check out what she has. And this has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation full of wisdom. And I, I, you know, I'm feeling like I need to do a part two to get, cause we got to get your testimony of how God, you yeah. know, how you got your husband, how he kind of slid, you know, <laughs> we the, the we wants to know, you yeah. know, we <laughs> we want to know. But it's been such a pleasure to have you here. And I know that people will be so blessed. So <laughs> I am so thankful. But there you have it. Thank you for being here. Blessings and abundance to you. And until next time. Thank you. Thank so much. you.